Nikon FM. If you're looking for a decent, mechanical, dependable film camera, this has to be one of your top three. Absolutely brilliant camera, introduced in 1977. My name is Jonathan Harris. I'm going to run through the features of the camera and also talk about what you need to look out for if you are buying secondhand. Okay, so Nikon FM. Introduced 1977, as I said, built for around four to five years before it was replaced by, by the Nikon FM2. Really decent, dependable, well-made, mechanical film camera. Okay, let's look at the top. Really standard, standard layout. Winds on crank, shutter, uh, shutter speed dial. Shutter speeds go from one second to one thousandth of a second. The FM2 that I mentioned, which replaced this, um, has an updated shutter which goes up to a four thousandth of a second. So you do have on the FM2 an additional two stops at the top end. Um, but a thousandth of a second will, will, will suit most photographers in most situations totally, totally well. This little switch here is a multiple exposure switch. If you slide that across while winding on the, um, the film, it cocks the shutter, but it doesn't advance the film. ASA window, to set the ASA, you just lift, lift, lift the dial and turn. Really, really straightforward. Hot shoe, needs, needs, needs an explanation. Rewind crank to, uh, to open the back. You lift the, uh, lift the rewind crank, but there is a little lever just there, so you pull the lever backwards and at the same time lift to, uh, to open the back. Just looking in the back, completely standard setup. Um, looking at the base, battery chamber, takes two little 10L14 batteries. All that does is to operate the meter. As I said, it's a completely mechanical camera, so if the batteries fail, you can still use them, the, the shutter, you can still use the camera at all, at, 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 all, at all speeds. Connection there, connection there for the motor drive. A little button there is obviously the uh, film rewind. Push that in just to disengage the, um, the sprocket, the um, wind-on mechanism, so you can rewind the film back into the camera. Just looking at the front, self-timer, depth of field preview, so that'll um, shut down the aperture as you can see and on this side you've got the lens release and you've got the flash um, the flash connection lenses for this camera lens release is just there lenses for this camera nikon ai or ais mount both work perfectly you can also use most nikon af lenses although there are some exceptions so just uh, just log on to Nikon's website and there's a lens compatibility chart which will talk you through exactly which AF lenses work with this and which and which which don't. You can also actually um, stick the older non-AI lenses on. There's a little lever, the little AI coupling prong just, just there if you can see it. Actually, actually folds up. You push this little button in here and that little that little AI coupler prong. Just, um, just folds up, which allows you to put older non-AI eye lenses on as well. Although with the earlier non-AI non lenses, you won't, um, you won't get any, 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 any uh, metering. Okay, so if you're looking for one of these secondhand, you do have to be a bit careful. I mean, as I said, they were made for around four or five years in the, in the late 70s, early 80s. They're gonna be 40 odd years old. So you do have to buy with some care. Three things you need to look at. The same thing, three things I generally always talk about in these videos. You need to look at the cosmetics, you need to look at the optics, and you need to look at the, the mechanics and the electronics. First of all, just, just, just have a look over the camera. Given that it's 40 years old, there may be one or two little signs of use. That's not a problem. What you want to avoid are the heavily used cameras and the, the, the misused cameras. Look very carefully at the top. The prism is actually quite vulnerable and it's quite common to see that they've been knocked. Have a look at the front here and just make sure that the, the, the prism housing there is parallel to the, um, the top of the Nikon nameplate there. If they've been knocked, you can often see that those two lines aren't parallel. Also, just have a look at the back. Just make sure that the um, the hot shoe there is parallel with the uh, with the back to make sure it hasn't been knocked or distorted. Have a look at the corners. Make sure the corners are all nice and clean. No nasty dings there. And like obviously, have a look at the bottom corners just to make sure that um, no nasty knocks or bashes there. 
The camera is available in black and in chrome. If it's black, they do tend to look a lot more worn, just where the black paint becomes brassy. Not necessarily an issue in itself, just make sure it, it isn't excessive. But by taking some time looking at the cosmetics, you can build up a good picture of how how the camera has led its life. You want something that's been looked after, something that's been cared for. You don't really want something that's been professionally used. So once you've done that, if you're happy that it hasn't been completely misused, then, then, then just move on to the optics. Um, I won't discuss the lenses. I've got other videos that talk about checking lenses. Just have a look at the, um, just have a look into the lens, into, into, the, into the lens, the lens mount and look at the mirror. Just make sure there are nasty, no nasty spots of fungus, no nasty scratches on the mirror. And also look, look through the viewfinder and actually into the viewfinder, just to make sure there are no excessive amounts of dust inside and no spots of fungus behind the, um, behind the viewfinder. I will put a link up to, to talk more about fungus. That's something you really do need to know about with, the, with these older cameras. But check the glass up, make sure that's all clean. If you're happy with that, then, then move on to the, um, Move on, move on to the mechanics. Now, the one thing that always fails on these cameras, and it's, it's not a fault of Nikon, there's one thing that always will fail are the light seals. Uh, the light seals are rubber-based, and as with anything that's rubber-based, over time, it deteriorates. So unless you have these serviced once every 10 or 15 years, the light seals will begin to fail. Now, easiest places to spot that are here, this isn't actually a light seal, it's, 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 it's the, 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 the damping for the mirror. As it, as it flies up, it, it touches that foam. Um, just have a look at the foam there, make sure it's nice and spongy. If it is nice and spongy, that's great. If it's sticky, or if it, if it isn't spongy, then that's a sign that the light seals overall will need replacing. If you also look at the mirror, sometimes you see a little line across the bottom of the mirror, where the mirror's gone up, it's hit the foam and the foam begins to stick to the mirror. Again, that's a sign that, um, that the, the foam is beginning to deteriorate. There's another fault you often see with these cameras, and that's if you stick it on one second and you fire it. Let's wind it on, stick it on one second and fire it. The mirror doesn't always return. The mirror sometimes seems to stick. It's very easy to assume that's the shutter mechanism sticking, but it may not be. Check the foam, and it could be the mirror itself sticking to the, to the deteriorating foam. So if you see the mirror is not coming down quite as quickly as it should be, it may not be the end of the world at all. It may just be that that foam needs replacing. Also, with the light seals, have a look. Have a look into the camera, into the back of the camera. What I would always do is just rub my finger along there and rub my finger along there. And what you'll find is if the light seals, the light seals in this case are are in a groove there, and in a groove there, and they're also down here. If they're beginning to, dis to disintegrate, they'll stick to the edge, of the, um, the edge of the back. And I can actually feel on this one, that's a bit tacky, it's a bit sticky, which is a sign the light seal is beginning to go. And you'll also see here, they're slightly discolored, and they're not spongy. Yeah, that's a sign they need replacing. So this camera, in common with most cameras of this age, will need its light seals replaced. So that's the first thing to always check, and inevitably, I'm afraid to say, unless it's been done recently, that will need to be done. But once, 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 once you've done that, the other thing to check is the shutter. Wind it on, open the back, and just fire it on one second. Hold it up, and just look through, and just make sure that the shutter is opening and closing, and that the mirror is doing what it should be doing. So you get go, going up, going down, not sticking. Move from a second to half a second. Try it again. And you're just making sure that the, the shutter isn't sticking. Every time you change the shutter speed, the shutter sound does change accordingly. You're not timing this, you can't time this. You're just making sure it does change. And if you're on, for example, a second, fire it a few times and just make sure the sound is consistent. Fire it over and over and over, and just make sure it is firing consistently every time. If you hear it sticking, that could be a sign that the camera does need servicing. But as I mentioned, it could also be a sign that the mirror is sticking up on the phone. So do check that one as well. Okay, so once you've checked out the slow speeds, you're having the slow speeds, you're okay, go up to a thousandth, open the back again, now look through, hold it up to a bright light, and just look through, 
and just make sure that you can see light all the way across the film gate. You want to make sure that the shutter itself is clearing the film gate at all points. When you look through, you want to be able to see light. At the, it's a vertical. It's a, it's a um, it's a vertical shutter, so you want to be making sure you can see light at the top and light at the bottom. If you can only see light at the bottom as you fire the shutter, you can't see it at the top of the film gate, that's a sign again the shutter needs servicing. Not the end of the world, they are mechanical shutters, they can be fixed, but it can be pricey. And a full service on one of these won't be far off the, the, the value of the camera. So it's worth, it's worth spotting um, if you can to avoid a nasty shot later on. Okay, so... Assuming your, um, your your shutter is working as it should be, another thing I'll do quickly is just check the um, check the battery chamber, make sure there's no nasty corrosion in the uh, in the battery chamber. Often these might have been stored for quite a long time unused, and people do inevitably leave the batteries in. So just make sure there isn't excessive or nasty uh, corrosion on the um, on the in, in the battery chamber itself. I'll then make sure you've got some fresh batteries in it. Stick a lens on it. And just check the meter. Now the metering on these is really straightforward. It's, it's a plus and minus and a zero. Just, just turn the shutter speed dial just to make sure you're reading as you would expect. You can, you can compare it to a modern camera, compare it to a handheld meter. Don't expect it to read exactly the same as your, as your modern Nikon that's a Z9, it won't. Don't expect it to read exactly the same as your as your handheld Minolta meter, it just won't. But as long as it's within two thirds of a stop, that's good. That's that's good enough. These these meters never read exactly the same because they're they're all seeing slightly different things. Okay, so once you're happy that the the um, metering's okay, the shutter's okay, just just take take it outside with a lens on and just make sure it focuses on infinity. Um, if it doesn't, it may be an issue with the lens. So try another lens. But as long as you can see it's focusing on infinity, on infinity, you you can be fairly sure there's no there are no nasty issues with the mirror alignment or with the screen alignment, and that the that the top hasn't had a nasty knock. But that's only likely to be an issue if it has been banged, and if it's been banged, you'll probably see a dent in the in the prism anyway. Okay, so you've checked it cosmetically, and you're happy that it isn't hasn't been abused. You've checked its mechanics, the shutter's working well. You've, you've checked the meter, that's working well. And you've looked at the glass, that's all nice and clean, fantastic. Always go ahead to put test film through if you can. Just put a test film through, fire it on the higher speeds, fire it on the lower speeds, make sure that it's, that it's all consistent, make sure the focusing is absolutely spot on, and obviously make sure the exposure is um, is, is working well but don't rely solely on a film because some of these issues you may not spot um, with, with a film for example if the um, if the light baffling is beginning to go it may not show up immediately but after six months of use of the, the back opening and closing you might suddenly get fogging so do 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 run through the checks that I've outlined here as well as uh, running a test th uh, film through if you can um, I hope that's been useful. If you've got any questions, please stick them in the uh, boxes below. Otherwise, please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.